Hello friends, if you are just a beginner and if you are just getting started with Arduino Uno and if you buy this Arduino kit, Arduino Uno kit, uh, and if you take it in your hand, you might realize there are so many things on the board. I mean, you can see some chips, some resistor, capacitor, some really ugly looking electronics components which you may not understand what it is and what it's been used for. So in this video, I will be going to introduce you what is Arduino Uno and uh, what are the different pins and what are the features that are available on Arduino Uno board. So first of all, on any microcontroller board, the heart of the board is the central processing unit. So since Arduino is a microcontroller board, you can see there is 80 mega 328 microcontroller chip, which belongs to AVR architecture. And some people also refer to call it as the Arduino chip because it runs a special piece of software called Arduino bootloader. So basically it's the Atmel chip with AVR architecture but because it runs a Arduino bootloader it's been referred as a Arduino board or Arduino chip or whatever you like. After the uh, central processing unit of the board there comes another very important part of this Arduino board that is called a digital pins. So if you look at this upper um, up, upper part of this Arduino board uh, there are around 14 digital pins and uh, that's been uh, labeled from 0 to 13. If you follow my mouse cursor, you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 13. These are the digital pins. Now, digital pins are very useful uh, to connect on um, digital devices, something like LEDs, switches, display motors, and even digital sensors, because these days digital sensors are quite a bit popular and you might see a lot of, and you might want to use it in future to connect and get the data from the devices, right? And to have a fun with it. So these are the digital pins. So in a nutshell you have around 14 digital pins but at the same time you will see some pins on on the board from 0 to 13 itself but uh, let's say if I say pin number 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. These are the special pins. You can see there is a special symbol called tilde sign, right? You can see on the board it is written PWM and a tilde sign. So these are the digital pins but a special features with the board uh, with the pin called PWM. So what is a what it, it what it means PWM? PWM stands for pulse width modulation. So these are the digital pins. I mean 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11 number pin. These are the digital pins which has the ability to generate an analog voltage. Right, so let's say if you have a devices like um, LEDs or maybe motors or something which you don't want to turn on and off because when you have a digital device you might want to turn on this device, turn off the device but you rather want to control the brightness. I mean you don't want on, you don't want off but you want the brightness to be in between. Right, or maybe you have a motor, you don't want to turn on the motor, neither you want to turn on nor you want to turn off, you want to control the speed of the motor. So this kind of application has to be built by generating a variable voltage on that particular pin and a digital pin of course can do it with a special feature called pulse width modulation. So you have a six pins, three, five, six, 9, 10, 11, these are the pins, these are the digital pins which has the pulse width modulation capability. So we're going to use these pins in the future and build some really cool stuff, right? And the next step is um, in the lower right corner you can see you have uh, I think six pins from A0, A1, A2, A3, A5. These are the analog pins. Now these analog pins are very useful when you want to connect an analog sensor to your microcontroller project, especially Arduino project, because analog sensors are very accurate and they are very famous. You can see several temperature sensors, light sensors, proximity sensors and many analog sensors you will find it in uh, with your you know projects in the future. Then comes the power pins because you know the power is very important in electronics. If you don't give power, you would not able to complete your circuits and your entire electronic stuff would not going to work. So you can see there are a um, couple of ground pins, couple of um, you know input voltage, IO reference voltage, 3.3 volt, 5 volts. These are all the power pins you might need to power up your electronic circuit. So your question may be why there is 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So you might see some low power devices, some sensors, some Bluetooth modules and even other uh, something like Zigbee and all 
this kind of devices, low power devices, uh, needs a 3.3 volt, not a 5 volt. Whereas if you go for some devices like LCDs, MODOS, they draw more power and they need a 5 volt as an input voltage, right? And so you need sometimes 5 volts, you need 3.3 volt, and of course you need a plenty of grounds there so that when you connect your circuit on a breadboard you have enough ground pin so that your circuit would not would not look messy and ugly right so next step uh, next component on the board you will find is a USB connector it's a USB um, type B because um, the USB cable that you will use to connect this Arduino Uno to your laptop or computer is a standard USB cable type A to type B and this is very um, important um, 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 interface to understand because over USB you will going to upload a program for you from your computer or PC to the microcontroller board so and also you can even power this board with a USB but sometimes it's not good to power over USB but that's a whole different discussion we'll get into that later on then you have a DC wall adapter now you might see I said like you can power this board over USB using USB connector the the first uh, connector that we have seen just before and then we have a DC wall adapter to power up this board so sometimes in some applications I mean the power hungry application let's say for uh, driving displays motors and many um, other project where your electronic circuit draw more power from the microcontroller there you need to give an external uh, power supply and that will be through your DC wall adapter because this DC wall adapter could be somewhere from 9 volt to 12 volt to 1 ampere uh, current so it make sure that your electronic circuit has enough power but in the beginning we won't be using anything we won't be using any DC wall adapter maybe when we will go for motion control applications somewhere we can control um, DC motors, servo motors, stepper motors and other industrial motion control devices then maybe we're going to uh, connect a DC uh, wall adapter otherwise most of the cases 80 90 percent of the time USB connector from PC um, means Arduino board connected to PC over USB is, is better off it's enough right it's only for special cases when you need a DC wall adapter now we have seen all the pins and we have seen its functions but every pin I mean most of the pins on the microcontrollers comes with a alternate pin function means one pin can perform a multiple functions so if I say pin 0 and 1 which in, in, in the previous section I said 0 and 1 are the digital pins but at the same times 0 and 1 are the serial UART pins so 0 is nothing but the RX and 1 digital one is nothing but the TX so these are the serial UART pin very very important because they are internally connected to this USB and these are very important serial UART connector when you want to connect um, USB I mean a serial Bluetooth um, um, serial GPS GSM module and many many external devices or maybe for debugging I mean when you write a code and you want to debug something UART interface it is a universal asynchronous um, receiver and transmitter uh, TX and RX pins so these are very very standard and very commonly used uh, protocols so you will be needing this for many of your projects you will be using those in your projects later on you will see pin A4 and A5 that are the analog pin as I said but this pin can also be acting as a I2C pin so A5 can be used as a SCL that's a serial clock and SI2C SDA pin A4 that is for a serial data line so this I2C protocol is very very important because there are many sensors and memory chips that comes with I2C protocol when we will get into I2C you can able to see how powerful it is and how important it is in, in the world of electronics because you can interface uh, IPROM you can interface some of the you know gyroscope and um, 
um, you know, RTC clock and then um, many, many devices that you can interface over I2C communication protocol. Then comes another very important protocol called SPI pins. So SPI is again another very important protocol. Pin number 10, 11, 12 and 13, these are the SPI pins which can be used um, to, let's say, interfacing your SD card uh, to log the data into the SD card. If you want to connect this device Arduino to internet, you might want to add ethernet capability to your Arduino board and ethernet can connect to Arduino over SPI pins and there are so many things, so many devices that comes, I mean even EPROM chips that I know some of them they comes with the SPI protocols. So this uh, pins are also very important and you will be using it in your projects when you will go for some really cool projects and important uh, functionality to put in your applications. Then comes the ICSP header pins. So this ICSP, you have a two ICSP header pins. These are basically the programming pins to program this 80 mega 328 chip. We would not going to use it maybe in very very advanced um, when you will be a really expert then you might want to use this to flash the Arduino bootloader into this chip or maybe you want to you want to put the USB um, drivers onto this chip but we we're not going to use it but just for information you see this on the board and you might have a question what 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 the heck these pins are and where it will be used for so that is an ICSP header that you will going to connect to AVR programmer and debugger now the next step when you know all the pins and organization of this board you might want to connect this Arduino board to your laptop and you can see on a screen there is a USB cable type A to type B and you can connect straight to your laptop using this USB cable and um, in the next video we'll see how we can able to set up and install the Arduino software and write a very first application. I hope you will find this video educational and entertaining. Thank you very much.